Lake Victoria is the largest freshwater lake in Africa and the chief reservoir of the Nile, lying mainly in Tanzania and Uganda but bordering on Kenya in the city of Kisumu. According to a report by the United Nations in Fighting Water Weeds in the year 2000, it states that the consensus is that water has since entered Lake Victoria from Rwanda via River Kagera. The higher scene has since spread prolifically due to a lack of natural predators, an abundance of space, agreeable temperature conditions, and abundant nutrients. Helping with its management is one young man who is our guest tonight. He saw the problem of the water hyacinth menace and rain towards it. And in tackling it, he found an opportunity to also create a venture out of this weed. My name is Michael Otieno and I'm in the business of uh, handmade paper making from water essence weed. I joined a certain NGO. It was an NGO by then, way back in 2004. Then uh, I was taught on utilization of essence where we were using the weed to make furniture. Then later on I learned handmade paper production from the same weed. Entrepreneurs who get to learn fast on their job end up getting opportunities to delve in their own businesses. After getting this idea, then in 2006, my former boss by the name Michael Mchilwa advised me to start my own business and uh, sell to the locals around. Yeah, so I started and uh, by that time I was just, it was a bit tricky because uh, I was in the experimental phase trying to come up with trying to pulp the weed to make paper. And you know, it was trial and error, then eventually I managed to come with a considerable good quality essence paper. After getting an okay from one of his mentors, Michael did all he could to make sure he set foot into entrepreneurship. My starting capital was less than 10K, 10,000 Kenyan shillings. So I bought a trough and uh, the trough normally is where after pulping the hyacinth, we mix it in water. Then using wooden frame with a net attached to it, we just sieve it, then the paper forms on the net. So I started with uh, only three frames and uh, I was also pulping it manually using mortar and pistol. Having set foot in Michael's workshop, he runs us through the process the weed goes through when it reaches his hands. We cut them into smaller pieces, then we cook it for three hours, after which we use locally fabricated machines to pulp it. After pulping, then we take the pulp, then mix in a trough half filled with water, then using a wooden frame with a net attached to it to just sieve it, then the paper spreads on the net. So after that, we just put it to dry under the sun. Entrepreneurs have an upper hand in controlling the number of workmanship they need when it comes to the amount of work they have. It depends also with the nature of the order we have. The order is huge, I have to employ more people. But at the moment, since the order is not very much, I just hired these two ladies to help me. So we are three at the moment. And also during harvesting of the weed from the lake, we also work with communities along the lake. So we also hire their boats and also their services. And uh, so that is indirect employment. And also we hire pickup to transport the weed from the lake to the workshop. Yes, it's a weed that is a menace in Lake Victoria, but what kind of products can come out of it? Yeah, the product range is wide. The paper, the icing, paper products are wide. We have bookmarks, we have letterheads, we have gift cards, we, we, we have invitation cards, name tags. The list is endless, even the wrapping papers. This is a weed that needs more than tackling it manually and Michael talks of the challenges he and his team face. The challenges basically has been uh, lack of enough technology because we just use locally fabricated machines to the cost of electricity is slightly higher, therefore it makes the production cost expensive. Three, since we just operate in our residential area, we are limited to space and also we cannot produce in mass. As the people of Victoria Nyanza try ways of controlling the weed menace, Michael sees it as an opportunity to even bring more people on board. My future plans is just to 
establish this product, this project to be a big company where we operate in a more professional way and also we provide employment opportunities to many youths who are employed, are unemployed and also in the process we want to also check the weed in the lake yeah? by creating jobs to the fishermen who has lost their jobs due to the existence of this weed and also to the youths who some have just finished school and some colleges and they are unemployed. So this project uh, after expanding it, it shall produce employment opportunities to the locals. Like Michael, don't run away from this weed menace but run towards it. He gives advice to anyone wanting to venture into this green affair in controlling the weed at the lake. There is a lot that meets the eye. For every problem there is an opportunity. So while people are, are running away from the problem, me I was running towards it because I saw the potential it had. So Iosynth also got so many uses. One, uh, you can use it as an organic fertilizer by just getting it, then decomposing it, then you apply it in your farm. Two, you can use it to do furniture by splitting the the, the, the stems, then you dry it, then you plate it, then you weave furniture and household items. Again, uh, this weed can be used to produce biogas. Then uh, also it can be used to as animal feed, especially cow. You just mix with a little salt then you are good to go. So my advice is there is a lot of opportunities and, and potential this weed got. So it also depends with your creativity and also the passion you have in your work. Because you know some of these things you will never get trained in anyway. It, it, it needs your creativity and also to be innovative that is yeah. Whenever you get yourself into making the earth a better place to live in, then you cannot go unnoticed, like in Michael's case. I participated in the Green Innovation Awards which I won, organized by the National Environment Trust Fund and uh, through that I was linked to, I was linked with the Climate Innovation Center for Business Incubation at least to help me to better this business venture and also to increase the impact of the project. In 2012, I managed to be the overall winner in the Enablis Safaricom ILO business plan competition and again uh, I participated in the national during the second week I participated with the National Commission for Science, Technology and Innovation where I emerged the best innovator. Then uh, 2014 I also won the National Environment Trust Fund that is Green Innovation Awards. A piece of advice to the jobless and unemployed youth? They should not choose the kind of job. They should just see any type of job which is available in the locality. They should take that because I also went through that because uh, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. I never chose any kind of job and also you should give it more seriousness you should be focused and also you should be passionate about your business. Two, you should not expect the results overnight. Any entrepreneur has what keeps them going in the enterprise they have created. Michael narrates of his. My motivation is that one, this, this business really sustains me. Two, I'm trying to offer a solution, a sustainable solution in tackling the water acid menace because one, it really causes a lot of uh, damage in the lake and also to the fishing industry. The fishing industry is crippled because of the weed and that uh, makes life to be more expensive. The cost of fish has gone up and you know this area we are just, that's our staple food. So you find acid has really made the 
because of fish go up and also boat holders who use boats to transport tourists around the lake they cannot go on with their business because of the weed fearing that they'll be trapped if you have any comments on tonight's entrepreneur leave a comment on our facebook page ktn the entrepreneur or reach us on our twitter handle ktn the entrepreneur After high school, most people engage in choosing what careers to undertake and what college to attend and so on. However, parents tend to influence most decisions and some people end up being frustrated by wrong career choices. Our guest tonight took one path in his career but ended up being in a totally different one, entrepreneurship. This came about by the interest he had developed through passion like many entrepreneurs end up doing. My name is Ismail Mutuma and I'm a designer. I deal with leather products and beadwork. So what was his choice career before he became an entrepreneur? I was actually involved in IT. I did IT in college. I, I was actually involved in uh, repairs, computer repairs, programming, yeah. Entrepreneurs with talent and passion will always push themselves beyond the limits to bring out what they feel is locked within them. As was the case for Michael, not even a professional career would stop him. I did, okay, back in 2011, I, I did some small bags, a tote bag, because I used to do some bit of lead, uh, some bit of knot work in my spare time. So I, you know, I did some pieces and then I took them out there to friends and sold them and then they told me, hey, you have a talent, so you can do this. So I said, okay, let, let me try. And but from that time, I just did it. I like daring myself. Uh, most of the times, I like I like new ideas. So I found that here I could actually express myself more, rather than where I was back in IT. So I I took that challenge and I got into it. Some entrepreneurs get into business due to changes they want to bring to an industry. Because uh, mainly in, 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 this, in this area, there's a lot of stalemate out there in, 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 the, in the market. You find that they do, or most craftsmen uh, do copy cutting. They do the same thing year in, year out. So I said I, I could inject something new and uh, I tried and, you know, I just loved it. Proximity to raw materials for doing business is often an advantage to any entrepreneur and one can save up on expenses and maximize their business. I'm currently based in Nanet, but I normally go for them in Akuru. And uh, mostly I buy leather because you can go to near leather, suede, and uh, tires, the tire soles, and the foam. For the other materials like beads or shells, I normally travel by public means to Nairobi to go get them and uh, Mombasa to go buy the shells. Um, I, I, I decided to run from home, a small home uh, business uh, office, because it's, it's cheaper, the cost of production here is cheaper than actually in town, because in town you have to pay for, you know, there's a lot of expenses there, the, the rent, the work. So I normally uh, find that the cost of production is lower, so I get more returns. Entrepreneurs are generous in spending what they have as long as it is of benefit to the proteges and their businesses. Normally, I didn't, I didn't, initially I didn't go for skill because I, had, I have all the skills. So I, I looked for a way of actually doing uh, uh, production, you know, increasing my production. So I, I taught uh, the, 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 the beadwork uh, to the people, I, uh, the person I have so that I, I could get more, I'll do, you know, do more in a short period of time. But currently, I'm small, I have two people. One is actually dealing with bead, beadwork, and the other person who normally does 
the designing, the drafting and the cutting yeah, and the stitching. And with a dedicated team, Ishmael is able to meet the demand depending on what is ordered and his pricing is manageable. Normally 10, 10 pairs, I normally get to do 10 pairs of sandals. But depends if I am doing, let's say, because when I say sandals, they are normally, you know, um, different sandals. There's a Roman sandals, open sandals, just generally the Roman sandals, the gladiator sandals. So it depends on the type of sandal the client, the clientele have actually ordered for. So if it's the Roman sandals, I normally do eight pairs, can manage eight pairs. If it's the gladiator sandals, they can manage six pairs a day. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a peak period, I actually do sell a lot of sandals. Uh, it can range from actually from 60 pairs to 70 pairs. I normally, my price range is not very expensive. Uh, I range from 400 shillings to 1,000 shillings, depending on the design of the sandals and the materials involved, yeah, and the beadwork, the leather. Machines ease up workload, however, you just never know how far your products can take you as an entrepreneur, so keep doing what you do. So I did my first pair back in 2012 uh, April and by hand. So I started small, I, I could only manage, back then I could only manage two, three pairs a day. Yeah. So I, I, I continued that way until last year, uh, late last year actually, I got involved uh, by there's a, there's a colleague of mine who introduced me to, to an NGO um, and they, you know, they came, they saw the products I made and then they, we, we did some training, six weeks training and then I got some funding from there and then that is how I was able to get actually my stitching machine. Okay. Customers want to feel appreciated and a listening ear will give them confidence. I, I guarantee uh, customer satisfaction through uh, um, you know, two-way interaction uh, mode. When I sell my product, I like the feedback. I like actually, to, I like knowing the feedback. Is it, uh, is it okay? Is it long-lasting? Is it uh, durable? Is it, you know, the, the, the workmanship, the craftsmanship? So this one actually, this information actually helps me, uh, you know, better myself. Entrepreneurs are aware of the fact that the key to their success is to be extraordinary in all ways possible. Competition is healthy because it, it, it ups your game. So I'm able to, to do more or, or either you know, do better. So I don't fear competition. It's, it's, it's a way of actually making me do something unique. I do a lot of research work uh, because most of the time I'm, I'm online. So I do a lot of... Uh, online you know, research in terms of uh, techniques, in terms of what, what other craftsmen are doing out there. Yes, and that's how I normally gauge myself and be able to do better. If you feel you have that artistic hand, then Ishmael has this piece of advice. Uh, the first main thing is uh, focus. Uh, you know, it requires a lot of focus and uh, self-determination. Uh, not to give up easily because it's not easy actually, you know, you know, starting up uh, from the ground up, uh, especially when you're when you're when you're starting small. And um, the first major thing is, um, you know, discipline. Self-discipline matters a lot. What are his future plans? Ishmael wants all his products known far and wide. I, I actually aim to go big. Uh, global, that is my major, major, uh, for um, you know, vision. Yeah. yeah, I want to sell more uh, to the international markets out there. Every entrepreneur gets into a business with a willpower to accomplish what they possess inside of them. Uh, there's a there's that fire in me that is what actually motivates me a lot. I, I like pushing myself to the limits every time, every day. It feels like I'm doing something new every day. To the youth who think all is gone, Ismail gives various avenues to make it as an entrepreneur. There is a lot of jobs around, even even the smallest of jobs. Uh, something small, you can start from somewhere. You know, don't just sit, sit around and say, I, I have no work. 
because what I meant, what, what I know is that uh, we have a lot of highly educated, uh, highly educated uh, youth in Kenya. So we, we, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's some small things we can do around. Anything that can actually earn you money can be a source of employment. Don't just go for um, you know, formal jobs. Something small, it can be in catering, it can be in the cleaning, it can be anywhere. Yeah. If you have any comments on tonight's entrepreneur, leave a comment on our Facebook page, KTN The Entrepreneur, or reach us on our Twitter handle, KTN The Entrepreneur.